Here at Tick Performance, we're introducing two really cool new products, our Corvette billet front plate for Corvette six speeds and our GM T56 billet front plate with some really cool new features. So this is really exciting. Um, I'm really stoked about this. We've got a couple of these out in some Team Tick members' hands to test out road race and drag race applications. And so we have Corvette application, GM application. Uh, this will work with any GM T56 or TR6060. The only difference is the size of that front bearing. Yeah, that's correct. With anything that you're that you're making out of solid like this, the whole intent is to make something stronger structurally. Uh, and that's what we've done. We've made them you know, structurally stronger than the cast piece that comes from Treme. Gears are meant to run true to each other. And when things start flexing, they're not true anymore. And it's not just, uh, it's not just that they're pushing away from each other, they're, they're actually trying to, trying to bend away from each other as well. Uh, and this, this adds strength in both of those directions and, and keeps that from happening. For years we have been welding bungs into cases. So we drill a hole in your case, uh, weld a bung in that has a tube inside that points at a certain gear or a certain area of the gears. Uh, and then you force feed fluid with an electric pump that just pushes fluid onto those gears and keeps them, keeps them coated, keeps them cool, keeps them from burning up under those high load, high horsepower, long, long pulls, uh, which is what these things were always subject to doing was burning those forward gears up because of that. We now have a mechanical pump as well as the electric pump. Yeah, yeah. So after we come out with the original style of the front plate for, you know, what mainly were used in F-body style applications, um, we got a lot of requests for the Corvette. Uh, and we knew that we wanted to make it a little special. I can just flip this Corvette plate around right here and we can, you know, touch on a couple of the things uh, that we've done for this. Uh, we, we took away the bronze bushing. Uh, so originally what we did was we did a bronze bushing uh, in these things and we had customers home to fit um, for, their, for their shift rail assemblies. We went back and we did away with that option and we've put bushings in it that you don't, you don't touch. It just goes together. It's got the clearance set already. Uh, there's no need in, in any kind of finish work or anything. You know, we didn't have any problems in house with it, but we've seen a couple of customers have that problem. So we didn't want to go back to that. So we redesigned that. Uh, one thing to note about the Corvette, uh, if you're a T56 guy, you know anything about Corvette T56s, uh, you, you, you see that there's no, what I like to call a bow tie on the front of this plate. Um, and what that is, factory is the detent. It's got a little, little bow tie shape that rocks back and forth. that has a spring on it. Um, they're really bad to wear on the plate, cause issues over time, uh, shifting issues specifically. So we've, we've omitted that. Obviously, you know, we've got a Corvette shifter. We've went through and we've uh, had a spring made to go into our shifter that accommodates for the lack of there being any detent here in those applications only. So we have a shifter that has a spring set up in it that will work for this uh, should, should a customer need it but that's the only way we were able to get around the issues that are presented with that, uh, that bow tie piece. Mm -hmm. uh, so they will have to have a shifter with a strong return to center spring. Something else to note on the Corvette style is we've added some bolt holes around the perimeter and if, if you're familiar with uh, C5 and C6 Corvettes and C7, you'll, you'll know what a diff brace is called. Um, so a lot of companies made tabs that bolt under these uh, under the, a couple of the bolt holes that you know where this bolt bolts to the torque tube, uh, and then they have the diff and with some with some bracing on it and some strut rods that go back uh, to sort of stiff, stiffen everything up. So we took the opportunity to add bolt holes um, directly to the plate itself. So you eliminate the tab that can flex. Uh, you eliminate having to bolt it under any any bolts here, uh, and you can just bolt a hind joint directly to the the perimeter of the plate itself. Uh, and do away with the extra, the extra nonsense. So we do plan to be able to offer this with diff bracing as well. So now we have a mechanical pump option uh, that goes into the plate just as, as Tremec offered with their TR6060 builds uh, or with their factory TR6060s. So we've machined the housing uh, that accepts a, uh, a billet gear set uh, to drive and, and, and flow oil. You can use it with an oil cooler. Uh, you can still use it with the spray bar. Um, so it, it, it functions as, as both a cooler and, and it would take the place of the electric pump in a, lot of, in a lot of applications. In the drag car world, we're still going to recommend the electric pump. 
because uh, of the low RPM fluid flow situation. So 12 volt pump, normally wide open throttle switch. When do you normally switch that? So a lot of guys hook these to a, uh, a hob switch or if you're, if you're using an aftermarket ECU, you can wire it through that and you can have the, the computer give it an output of when you specify. And most guys are doing like, in the drag world, most guys are doing when they see boost. Um, so if you're on the two step, it goes ahead and it starts spraying in preparation for you to take off. Uh, nitrous cars, I feel like those guys are probably doing it on the initial hit uh, as soon as the nitrous hits or as soon as they uh, drop the clutch. And, I, and maybe some people are just making them where they're on a switch and they turn them on. Now, if it's a street strip type combo, you're going to drive it to the track, race it at the track, drive it home. The mechanical pump's probably all you're going to need. Um, Functionally, I like the mechanical pump better because you don't have an electronic part that could potentially fail. Can this be integrated with any of our previous generation billet front plates? It cannot. This is a complete redesign of the the original style. And so the mechanical pump, now you guys have tested it. We've shot some video just using a little handheld drill. Mm -hmm. It'll still flow really well at low RPM though, right? Yeah, it still flows really well. The, the hand drill test that we've done, I mean, we've put 1700 rpm into the pump um, which is going to be about uh, 1900 engine rpm give or take something like that it's 1700 rpm on the counter shaft which is what drives the pump that's about 2000 1900 engine rpm in most applications uh, depending on the gear set you have uh, and we saw really good good flow enough to coat the gears just fine um, enough to enough to run a cooling circuit if that's what you want to do it's plenty of volume really at idle to do the circuit portion of things and from about honestly 2500 engine rpm up it's going to be spraying really hard does this increase the fluid capacity i would assume so if you're running a cooler but you need to run more fluid with this setup if you were running a cooler with a cooling circuit you would have to have more fluid in it uh, to make up for what you have in the lines and in the cooler you know itself at all times um, obviously that volume is going to be dictated by where your cooler is and how big it is is it common for you to kind of overfill a little bit for this setup or does that matter so Tremex call out on all of their six-speed stuff I want to say was like 3.78 or something odd quarts of fluid we always recommend using four uh, it's easier math and it's not gonna hurt for it to be a quarter of a quart over it's only gonna help keep the bearings cool so this now has this slot in the side of it, and this is like what the 6060s came with. Uh, and the reason for that is because you have to have somewhere for the fluid to go <laughs> as it comes out of the pump. So, you know, it exits the, the pump here, and we've made this extended fitting. It's O-ring on one side, it's uh, dash 6A on this side, and it exits the front plate this way. Plumb it to a cooling circuit, or that's how you can do like a loop hose and come back to your spray bar. Uh, either way you want to do it. Now that fitting also doubles as an extended fitting for uh, a conventional Corvette, like a C6 that would have had a 6060 that already had a pump in the front plate. You can use that same fitting to convert it to an AN style. So it's kind of dual purpose. We'll have to use it on all of these, but you can also use it in those cars just as they are. When incorporating the mechanical pump into these plates, we had to obviously include a way to pick the fluid up. And you know, Tremec already did a good job at that. It's, so we've, we've made these plates to where you can use the Tremec uh, extended pickup tube that goes all the way to the back of the main case. And we've also designed and made a, uh, a, an all stainless steel high flow pickup. It has a little bit less screening, so it's 10 micron bigger. By going to a bigger tube, we were able to get you know, more volume into the pump as far as how much it would actually draw. Think of it like you're drinking from a straw. If you're drinking from, yep. through a tiny straw or a big straw, you're gonna get more volume with the bigger straw. Pricing will come standard as though you were running a 12 volt pump. Um, you can upgrade to the mechanical pump, you can keep a stock pickup tube, or you can upgrade to the better pickup tube. And then we also have the new feature of an input speed sensor. Yeah, so this is gonna be something really appealing to the drag car guys. If you have the electric pump to spray fluid, um, no big deal. Well, then you don't need the mechanical pump. Yeah. Uh, and if you get the plate without a pump at all, you know, it comes with this block off plate. You bolt the block off plate on there. You can still use it as, as you always did. You can use the electric pump with it. Uh, you can use it without a pump. You can use it just like it is. Okay. Well, we got to thinking, you know, if they're not running the mechanical pump and they, they want to run the electric pump, well, now they've got just a blocked off hole that 
could be utilized for something. So what we did is we decided to design ourselves a, uh, a speed sensor set up. So it's, it's basically a housing uh, that's going to bolt into the, into the same location as the pump. Uh, those things dowel in place and it's got this uh, this drive shaft inside um, with these bearings on either side and it'll have a reluctor gear and this drives in the same manner as the as the pump did from from Tremec so the Tremec had a, a shaft with a pin in it and the cluster gear is cut with a slot that this locks into uh, and it turns this turns this shaft so then what we were able to do is take you know just a an affordable sensor unlike what what we're having to use now when we're doing speed sensor through the side of the case is completely separated uh, from the inside of the transmission if you can see that or not um, but there's nothing there's nothing that's going to run into this damage it yeah. tear it up uh, but that just simply bolts in there uh, it's a hall effect sensor and in all of your aftermarket ecus now uh, you can do things called math channels and with a math channel you can take the tooth count off that reluctor uh, and do a math equation between your input and cluster gear tooth count. That way you know your difference in ratio between the two. Just say you had 20 teeth on the input, 30 on the cluster, and then you'll take that ratio and you can use that math channel to uh, give you an input speed. And uh, it makes it super simple. There's no more cutting up a case, buying a $350, $400 sensor. Those things have went up a lot. Uh, they're extremely expensive now. Um, and then the worst part about that was when you were welding it into the case, if you had a transmission failure, a gear failure, and it hit the end of that sensor, you just ruined a $400 sensor. Yeah. Uh, with this, you bolt it on. If your sensor goes out, you pull it out and replace it. You know, it's a lot. It's a lot more economical, and it gives a use for the guys who want to use this in a drag racing application. And what a lot of guys are monitoring is clutch lip. You're an enthusiast buying from an enthusiast. The ultimate goal is to build things for guys that are in the pits with you every weekend. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I've got a passion for this kind of stuff. I like to build things. I like to just, I like to just see if I can do something and, yeah. and make it work. Kind of the the deal behind the speed sensor. You know, it's like, hey, you've got a, a unused area. Let's see what we can make. Let's see what we can do to make this better.